In this video, we become familiar with the concept of a set and set notation. And we also look at some of the common sets. This set of videos is all about regular and context-free languages. To get to grips with this, you need a fundamental understanding of the maths used for regular expressions. Well, what do we mean by that? Well, first you need to understand what we mean by the term regular expression. Regular expressions are special sequences of characters that can be used to find or match patterns in text. Such patterns are used for string searching algorithms, find or find and replace operations on strings, and input validation. Some examples of regular expressions are shown here. A dot e matches any word that starts with a and ends with e, such as age, r or ax. Square brackets, naught hyphen nine square brackets plus. Now this would match any sequence of one or more digits, such as one, two, three, 42, or five, six, seven, five, three, zero, nine. The caret symbol, followed by the word hello, matches any line that starts with hello, such as hello world or hello, how are you? And cat, followed by the pipe symbol dog, matches either the word cat or the word dog, such as I have a cat or he likes dogs. We will look at regular expressions in more detail in a later video. This video and the next focus on the fundamental maths used for regular expressions. The study of how to use mathematical concepts and tools to describe and manipulate patterns of symbols such as letters, digits or punctuation marks. Regular expressions are often used in computer science, especially in text processing, pattern matching and data extraction. Let's start by understanding what we mean by the term set. This is an unordered collection of values or symbols in which each value or symbol occurs at most once. The following notation can be used to specify a given set. There are several common sets you need to be aware of. These are the symbols we use to represent an empty set. This capital letter N is used to represent the infinite set of natural numbers, and that includes zero. Natural numbers are whole numbers that are used for counting. For example, five bags of sugar, 50 tickets sold. This capital Z refers to the set of all integers. This includes negative, zero and positive. We then have the capital letter Q. Now this is the set of all rational numbers. So this is any value that can be expressed as a ratio or fraction. And this therefore includes all of set Z as any integer can be expressed as a fraction. We have R, the set of all real numbers. This is all possible real world quantities, and therefore this includes all of set Q, and therefore virtually all possible numbers. There are a few exceptions. For example, it doesn't include imaginary numbers sometimes used in mathematics, like infinity. So to recap, a set is an unordered collection of values or symbols in which each value or symbol occurs at most once. And there are a number of common sets with their shorthand which you need to be aware of, which are shown here. You also need to understand the terminology around finite and infinite sets. A finite set is a set whose elements can be counted off by natural numbers up to a particular number. For example, 100 is the fifth and final element 
of the set X, which we've shown on the screen. Another example is the finite set of all prime numbers up to 97. Another term that's important is cardinality, and this refers to the number of elements in a finite set. So in our first example, the cardinality of set X is 5. In our second example, the cardinality of set Y is 25. An infinite set is a set that has no end value, and we represent this by the three dots at the end of the set. We also have the idea of a countable set. That's a set that can be counted off against a subset of the natural numbers. A countable set is therefore either a finite set, which we've already covered, or a countably infinite set, which we're going to look at next. So finally, we have the term a countably infinite set. This is a set where you can count the elements off against the set of natural numbers. N is an example of a countably infinite set. You can count off each element of the set against the set of natural numbers. You also need to be able to understand and interpret set comprehension formulas under exam conditions. Here is a typical set comprehension formula you might see. Now, although it might look daunting, it is quite simple once we break it down and start to understand it. The key to understanding this formula lies in understanding what some of the special characters mean. And they're the ones we've highlighted in purple. The B equals curly brackets. This part simply means we have a set between the curly brackets that we're calling B. The rest of the formula determines what the contents of that set are. The vertical line or pipe symbol means such that. The weird looking E symbol means belongs to. And the little pyramid or carrot symbol means and. We're going to take another look at this set comprehension formula, but this time write it out in English using the information we just learned. So we have the set B equals N squared such that N belongs to the infinite set of natural numbers including zero and n is less than 5. Let's look at that again. The set B is going to be n squared, or every occurrence of n must belong to the set of natural numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., but only where n is less than 5. So n will be equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. B will equal each of these values squared, 0, 1, 4, 9, and 16. So that's our set. You will also need to understand what is meant by the Cartesian product of two sets. The Cartesian product of two sets is the set of all ordered pairs A and B, where A is a member of set A and B is a member of set B. We write this as A cross B, and this is how we say that when we speak it out in English. Let's look at an example. We have two sets, each with three values in them. Set A has 957 104, and set B has 33, 66, 99. We're going to produce the Cartesian product of these two sets. As you can see, the Cartesian product of sets A and B is the first value from set A paired with the first value from set B the first value from set A paired with the second value from set B, the first value from set A paired with the third value from set B. This pattern then repeats, but we move on to the second value in set A, and finally the third value 
in Satay. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. What is a set and what is the notation used to represent one? What are the shorthand notations for common sets? And what is set comprehension? And how can set comprehension formulas be built up to represent a set?